You know, it's hard to believe I've been on YouTube for almost seven freaking years by now and haven't had much of a demo reel to really show for it. I'll be the first to admit, I never intended to really take off and become the next big thing on this platform. This was always meant to be a passion project and hell, it still is. But I do remember my first video like it was yesterday. I talked about a certain video game called River City Ransom. And yeah, it wasn't all that great. I gave my original series the Viking funeral it deserved a while back, so if there's any episode that I made that was worthy of a do-over, it's definitely this one. Because to say I got a lot wrong about this game would be a bigger understatement than Duke Nukem Forever not being worth 10 years of hype. So let's <clears throat> rewind, if you will, and start from the top. There's an old saying that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, and while I believe that's true in some cases, that statement couldn't be further from the truth when it comes to video games, especially in the 80s and 90s. There were dozens upon dozens of companies who were trying to follow the trail that emerging titans such as Nintendo, Sega, Namco, and even lesser ones like Data East and Bally Midway were blazing forward. One of these trends that everyone was trying to jump on was having a quote-unquote franchise character that they could market as the face of their company and in turn make as many games as they could with said character. This ideal of having a reliable cash cow of a character could work if your games were actually good to play. Mario for Nintendo, Pac-Man for Namco, and Sonic the Hedgehog for Sega being prime examples, obviously. But other lesser known mascot characters like Arrow the Acrobat for Sunsoft and to an extremely lesser extent, Bubsy the Bobcat for Accolade would have an uphill battle because everyone would call them clones or rip-offs of the more popular characters despite the fact that they were attempting to be different, although it should be noted that even the most casual of gamers can spot a plagiarism attempt when they see one. So what's the point of all this rambling? Well, let's take a look at Technos, a small gaming company that got fairly big with the release of Double Dragon, which was considered by many to be the innovator of the beat-em-up genre. While the argument definitely exists for the lead characters Billy and Jimmy being the quote-unquote franchise characters for this company and are set in the same breath as Mario and Pac-Man, the fact is they're often miscredited. True Double Dragon ended up being the most popular game that they would end up creating and the game that set the tone for all modern beat-em-up games to follow, but if we're talking who Technos' franchise character truly was, it wasn't them. The argument could be made for it, but that honor went instead to this guy, Kunio-kun, a Japanese high school delinquent. While he may not be said in the same breath as Mario or Sonic, and he may not be as famous as Billy and Jimmy, not only did he come first, but him and his crazy adventures served to be a quite a popular series in Japan. And while these games are all related in Japan, it's a different story here in America who didn't quite think that people would get the whole Japanese high school culture. Oh, just you wait about that. So games like Renegade, Super Dodgeball, Crash and the Boys Street Challenge, and River City Ransom were all released with no real relation to each other. American audiences were mostly none the wiser unless they had some kind of insider knowledge about this switch. However, keep in mind, the internet wasn't widely available until years later, so the ways that they could find out about it were much more limited. But enough about that, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's go back to River City Ransom for a second, because this game actually has a lot more to it than what's on the surface. If you're, say, a person who only bothers to do like five minutes of research on this game, only going off of vague memories of playing this game with your siblings, not even bothering to play, let alone touch the game at all, and somehow make a half-assed game review show on the internet for all the world to see, would this game be the first episode? <gasps> You would probably think that this game is just another Double Dragon style beat-em-up game where you have to save your girlfriend from being kidnapped and ergo a rerun, or dare I say, an imitation of a game that they already created, which makes zero sense. However, this game in particular is way deeper than that. In fact, I would make the argument that games like Grand Theft Auto and Saints Row have this game to thank for even existing, if we're being completely honest here. The reason why? 
This game is one of the prime early examples of the sandbox genre of games in which how you play the game is completely non-linear. At the time of the game's release, open world games were more reserved to RPGs, whether they be action-oriented like Legend of Zelda, or text-based like Sword Thrust or Zork. Yep, Zork. <laughs> Shoutouts to my dad if he's watching, that's one of his favorite video games. <clears throat> Anyways, what Technos did with River City Ransom was blend elements from their previous hit in Double Dragon and expand upon them by blending them with the elements of an open-world non-linear game. Your adventures in River City aren't just about beating up on bad guys, taking their lunch money, and going to save your girlfriend, who's being held hostage by a rival street gang, you know, the standard. It's about doing so at your own pace and in your own way. You can blaze right through it, or you can farm enemies and level up, getting stronger along the way. You can beat up the minimum requirement of bosses, or you can try and complete the game as intended and beat them all up. Granted, there's only one ending, which, side note, is a point that I erroneously tried to correct in hindsight saying that there were multiple endings, but I really was just dumb. But how you get to that ending is completely up to you. Simply put, the world is your oyster in this game and you can eat it however you want to. Even if you're doing it in the most comically exaggerated way possible. I mean, seriously, look at that. It cracks me up every time. As a way to tie up the bow on this whole thesis, making the case for the Kunio Kun franchise being this proverbial golden child creation of Technos, this series is still going strong today, with indie titles like River City Ransom Underground and River City Girls being lovingly made fan games with legitimate licensing rights from Arc System Works themselves, the now owners of the rights of all Technos games. Not only that, but several remakes of the game were made too, such as River City Ransom EX for the Game Boy Advance, as well as River City Rival Showdown for the Nintendo DS. But all of this, all of it, needs to go back to the point I made earlier in the piece. If imitation truly is the sincerest form of flattery, then you can't actually label a game many have called an imitation of their spiritual predecessor an actual imitation, when in fact, it ended up becoming way more than that. I'll put it to you like this. For as underrated of a franchise character as he might have been in the history of video games, Kunio Kun could walk, so Michael, Franklin, and Trevor Phillips could run. Thanks for coming to my TED Talk.